Imagine this, you write some code, hit run, and while your program is running, it's secretly rewriting itself to get faster and smarter. Sounds like a science fiction, right? But that's exactly what the JVM does. Most programming languages take a simple path. You write code, compile it once, and the compiler spits out machine instructions for your CPU. If you need more performance, you tweak your code, recompile, and repeat. But the JVM doesn't play by those rules. Instead, it keeps watching, keeps learning, and keeps optimizing your code while it's running. And that's why it has powered everything from banking systems to high-frequency trading platforms for decades. Let's start simple. Your computer doesn't understand Java, Kotlin, or Scala. It only understands machine code. Most compiled languages translate directly to machine code. But that ties you to one platform. Write it on Windows, and you may need to rebuild it for Linux or Mac. That's where the idea of a virtual machine comes in. A VM is like a universal translator sitting between your code and the hardware. Instead of talking directly to the CPU, your program talks to the virtual layer and the VM figures out the rest. The JVM takes a different route. When you compile Java or Kotlin, it produces bytecode, a platform-independent format. Bytecode isn't raw machine code. It's an intermediate language that the JVM can run anywhere. So instead of compile once for each OS, you compile once to bytecode and let the JVM handle the rest. That's the promise of write once, run anywhere. When you run your program, the JVM first interprets the bytecode line by line. So startup is quick, but the real magic happens next. As soon as it sees methods being called repeatedly, the just-in-time or the JIT compiler steps in, converting those hotspots into optimized machine code. And this is where things get interesting. Unlike traditional compilers that do all the work upfront, the JVM is continuously profiling your code. If it notices a method is hard, it optimizes it. If patterns change, it can even de-optimize and recompile differently. It inlines small methods, unroll loops, eliminates dead code, and even shifts variables around to squeeze out more performance. In other words, your program isn't static. It's constantly being reshaped to fit how it actually runs in the real world. Think of it like a coach watching a game. Most compilers give you one strategy and hope it works. The JVM? It's right there on the sidelines, changing tactics as the game unfolds. Here is a simple loop that sums an array. The first few times it runs, the JVM just interprets it line by line. After it notices the loop is hard, the JIT compiles it into native code. Then it gets clever. Bounce checks may be removed, the loop might be unrolled, and in modern JVMs, it could even be vectorized. The end result? The CPU is running a super-optimized version that looks nothing like our original code. And it all happened automatically while the program was running. Now imagine this is happening not just in one tiny loop, but across every hot path in a massive application. That's why the JVM's approach is so powerful. Traditionally, languages like C or C++ use ahead-of-time compilation, or AOT. That simply means you write code, hit compile, and the compiler converts everything into native machine code before the program ever runs. When you launch it, your CPU is executing raw instructions directly. No middle layers, no runtime watching over it. The advantage? Instant startup. Because the heavy lifting happened at compile time. That's why your system tools or video games written in C++ start fast and run close to the metal. But there's a trade-off. Once compiled, that's it. The code won't adapt. If you discover performance bottlenecks, you have to tweak your code and recompile manually. The JVM flips this model with just-in-time compilation or JIT. Instead of compiling everything upfront, it starts running right away, then progressively compiles the parts that matters most. Over time, your app gets faster because the JVM learns from the real execution patterns. And that's why long-running JVM services often outperform statically compiled binaries. The code literally evolves as the system runs. Think of a web server running 24-7. Initially, it may take a bit of warm-up, but as requests pour in, the JVM tunes itself for your traffic patterns. That's why big companies trust it for high-throughput microservices. Or take a CLI tool. Here, startup time matters more than runtime optimization. That's when you'd use GraalVM native image, which compiles your app ahead of time into a lightweight binary. Boom! instant startup. 
And in fintech, where nanoseconds matter, the JVM shines with techniques like escape analysis, reducing allocations and lowering garbage collection pressure. For beginners, here is the takeaway. Don't overthink it. The JVM already does a ton for you. For advanced engineers, watch your allocations. Less garbage equals fewer GC pauses. Keep hot methods small so the JIT can inline them. And profile with tools like Java Flight Recorder or Async Profiler to see what the JIT is actually doing. So next time someone tells you Java is slow, remember this. The JVM isn't just a runtime. It's a self-tuning compiler that adapts your program on the fly. It doesn't just run your code. It studies it, reshapes it, and optimizes it in real time. And that's why it remains one of the most impressive pieces of engineering in computer science.